3 million Turks who live in Germany have been upset and they have been concerned. What would you say on this? And secondly, when it comes to freedom of the press, four accredited press members, their accreditations were cancelled out on the pretext of security of the summit and of Germany in terms of uh, press freedom, of course, that really made us upset. Uh, we wish they could also be a part of our team here. PKK, FETÖ, DHKPC members who have fled Turkey. They are comfortably living in Turkey and they are financially supported by German foundations. How would you elaborate on this? Your speech, uh, you said that was a, a political suicide. Now, terrorist organizations are sheltered here easily. Germany is, do you think that means Germany is welcoming terrorist organizations? In fact, um, the question which was asked to me just before you, actually you just answered his question in a way. Why? Because press members in Turkey, uh, uh, in Germany, I'm sorry. In Germany, some press members could not be accredited and they were not allowed to follow the G20 summit. So that is the kind of understanding and mindset that needs to be eliminated. That's one. Currently, we have Turkish people, three million of them living here in Germany. And on the occasion of this visit to Germany, I had wished to conduct a meeting with them in a closed venue. The Germany, the German administration, including different states of Germany, did not let me conduct that gathering, that meeting. They could not tolerate that. Now, I wonder what kind of an understanding of freedom that is linked to. If we live in a world of freedoms, liberties, think of the fact that 52% of the people in Turkey voted for me. That's how I became the president of my country. So this president is not allowed to speak in a hall, in a room in Germany, I'm sorry, but those people who don't allow me to do this cannot possibly be talking about liberties. Now, this is what I referred to when I talked about, quote unquote, a political suicide. This will act like a boomerang. Potentially, it may hit them back. In fact, now, forget about a meeting when it comes to a teleconference. Me getting connected through a teleconference to a meeting which was being held here, which would have allowed me to talk to Turkish people. They could not tolerate that. But the bandits of a terrorist organization who are on the mountains, they did allow those terrorist uh, organization members to get connected. This is something we should all know. So looking at this within a, from a perspective of freedoms, members of PKK terrorist organization, the leader of this terrorist organization, they were allowed to conduct a parade and they were protected by the police. Their parade was protected and safeguarded by the police. This was allowed. And other people, other legitimate associations of ours who wanted to enjoy the same right of association, they were not allowed. In Turkey, though, almost more than for 20 days now, the leader of the main opposition party in Turkey has been conducting a pseudo justice walk. It still continues. Now, that is a pseudo-justice walk within their own political party. They don't let other people be nominated to become the leader of their own political party. This is ridiculous, but we will overcome these problems. Yes. Let me go around the room. Iraq uh, hold referendum on September this year. What will you position on uh, the result of referendum? Thank you.
Doğrusu... Now, in fact, when it comes to the referendum, as far as Iraq's um, territoriality is concerned, I don't think the referendum is the right thing to do. Territorial integrity. That is problematic as a step. I discussed this with my dear friend Barzani through our foreign service. We said this is not the right path to go on. Because in the future, it would be potentially difficult for you to pay for this, to pay for the cost of this. Now, in fact, as we speak, I don't know where they stand. I hope before the referendum is conducted, they will give up on this idea. But the thing is, they have been resisting on this. They have been insisting on this. I think that will cause them to lose because for us, the unity and integrity of Iraq is really important. Why don't we turn to this side? Engin Bash from Hamburg. I'm from a radio here. Al Flarmoni, what did you think about Al Flarmoni? Al Flarmoni, the concert hall. What did you think about the concert hall? I was going to ask you. I wasn't there. I watched it on TV, though. It's, looks like a very good project, though. The events in Hamburg uh, and uh, people built a connection between events here in Hamburg and the Gezi events in Istanbul. Did you were you aware of the events here in Hamburg? Yes, of course, I watched them on TV. What did you think about the attitude of the police? The police did their best, of course. But the thing is, um, in terms of strategy or tactic, what? How accurate it was is another issue. The we are not the political administrators here, and the police force here is not administered by us. Every country, of course, has their own strategies to combat such issues. They have our, their own tactics. Such uh, strategy or tactics of any given country is organized and identified by their own interior ministries and security forces. That's something we cannot interfere with. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot hear the question. What do you think about this? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the first part of the question because the gentleman was not using a microphone. Now, the right language must first be used. Is it suitable for you to ask this question using a slang word? Is it all going to be Turks only? How about women? Are women not asking questions? For the tra translation, thank you. Zanar Shinu from Rudo Media Network. Uh, President, uh, Mr. President, uh, most of the Kurds in Iraq see your relations between Turkey and Kurdish government in Kurdistan region very well, very good. But Kurds in Syria right now afraid that your relations with the Kurds in Syria must, should be better than right now, especially uh, the r current clash at the border between Turkey and Afrin. Uh, how would be your relation with the Kurds in Syria? Thank you. Now, dear friends, first of all, you should know the following. Our policy is not based on tri tribalism, and it's not based on racism either. We always center our attitude on the human. But when it comes to our borders, if there are certain creations that threat us, then vis-a-vis -vis such threats, we will do what is needed to be done. If in northern Iraq, I'm sorry, in northern Syria, a pseudo-Kurdish government is tried to be established, we won't allow that. In fact, in north of Syria, such a, a, a uh, an attempt was conducted and we stopped it. In the future, likewise, we would never allow that. And 
threats from that region towards our country will not be tolerated in any way at all. In fact, the Euphrates shield operation is an expression of this. Now, the Euphrates shield operation, the threats there were Daesh. And secondly, another threat was particularly the illegal Kurdish organization, which is PYD and YPG. They were threats against us. And vis-a-vis -vis such threats, we cannot possibly remain silent. In fact, in the Turkish province of Gaziantep, unfortunately, Daesh conducted an attack and 53 Turkish citizens were killed. Who were those people? Most of them were Kurdish, actually. Who killed them? They were Daesh. And up to that moment, we had kept patient. But as of that moment, we said, our patience is over, and we went into Jarablus, and we got rid of Daesh there. Then we went into Al Rai, and likewise we cleaned Rai off Daesh. Dabak also we did the same in Al Bab. It continued for almost 170 days, at the end of which we cleared that area off Daesh, and an area of close to 2,000 square meters was cleaned off from Daesh. Thanks to which our Syrian friends were able to go back to their land, to that zone. Afrin. Now, as far as we're, we're concerned, uh, Afrin is a threat. There is this continuous threat from Afrin to the Turkish province of Kilis. As long as that threat continues, we will continue to implement engagement rules and we will continue to teach a lesson in Afrin also. This is it. I think we're approaching the end of the meeting, the press meeting. Mr. Mr. President, there is a hot question, a hot issue. Kurds want a government in the Middle East. And the President Barzani says, I want a state for Kurds and the Turkish state, the Turkish government, why is it not supporting it? I have two questions. When will uh, Demirtas and HTP uh, deputies will be released? As I understand, you want Iraq uh, to be separated, to be divided. We can't allow for Iraq to be divided. If there is a division in Iraq, on the one hand, Turkmen's will be involved, then Arabs will come in. And after that, the entirety of Iraq will be put into pieces. Do you want Iraq to be put into pieces? We would not want that. Iraq, if it preserves in its integrity, it will remain strong. And there is also a religious denomination related aspect to it, a sectarian aspect to it. Hashti Shabi is looking for a place. There are Shiites, there are Sunnis, and in line with all this, such a division, would we allow for it? Our genuine will is the following. Up to now, Mr. Barzani and his work has always been supported by us mostly, and our support currently continues. So what we're saying is never advocate for a division because when it comes to fragmentation, there is never a good deed coming out of fragmentation. Union is essential. Don't break into pieces. This is what we're saying. This is something I've always told Mr. Barzani. And I have, this is something I have always also said to other authorities visiting us. Coming to your other question. Now, first of all, terrorists. We don't have the power, the authority to release terrorists from prisons. Turkey is a state of law. The person that you mentioned is a terrorist. And he's such a terrorist that all of my Kurdish sisters and brothers were guided into streets first. And then 53 of my Kurdish brothers and sisters were 
killed by other Kurds. This is what he solicited. This is only one of his offenses, and he, ha and he has many other similar offenses that he committed. PKK, YPG, uh, PYD is behind us, he says. He challenges us. Now, this is something before Turkish courts, and whatever the Turkish courts decide on or adjudicate on, we will have to respect. The last question, please. Um, the gentleman with the bow tie, please. Emre Pekar from Wall Street Journal. Two questions about the summit. First of all, about trade. For the first time during a G20 summit, um, trade-related imbalances and struggle against such balances uh, has for the first time been mentioned in a G20 declaration. What do you think about this? When it